We are story fandom. I'm alone. They've left me. <gasps> nah. They're just going out ahead and doing uh, some errands. I got home from work early. I thought this would be a good time to do my rant. You see, we each had a rant in mind, my wife and I, when we started the channel. And my wife, when she rants, it's so entertaining. She is so dramatic and over the top. And she's cute and vulgar. And it's just really fun. I guess that I'm scary. I don't mean to be, but I'm big. I have a deep voice. I get really, really loud. I figured... Well, I subject everyone to that. So, I'm here to give my rant, and I'll try my best not to be a jerk, but this is something I really, really feel passionate about. Okay. Just because you don't like a story doesn't mean it's badly written. Okay? They are not the same thing. For instance, I don't like period fiction. I especially don't like period romances. So, Pride and Prejudice? Blech. Not a fan. Does that mean I think Jane Austen is a bad writer? No. I know she's a good writer. I've actually had to read enough of her work to know she's a good writer. I just don't like her stories. And you want to know what? That's okay. I don't have to like her stories. But that doesn't mean I think she's a bad writer. Even if you don't like someone's writing, it doesn't mean they're a bad writer. I cannot stand Tolkien. Which might be channel suicide on my part, but still, I can't. He is a descriptive world-based writer, which is great if you like that. I don't. I like action character-based writing, so I am less of a fan of Tolkien and more of a fan of Jim Butcher. Does that mean I think Tolkien is a bad writer? No. Tolkien is an amazing writer. The depth of the world he created is awesome. The movies are amazing. Do you know how much time I have spent on TV tropes looking up all the backstory to Lord of the Rings? Tons. The characters are complex. The stories are great. I just can't actually read the books. I tried. And I got to the forest outside the Shire, you know, sitting there going, I don't care about these elves and their songs in the forest. They have nothing to do with the story. Can we just get back to the adventure? But I don't think he's a bad writer. I've been seeing this a lot lately with Ruby Volume 6. And it usually goes something along the lines of this. <clears throat> Man... Rooster Teeth sucks so much. Ugh. Can you believe what they did to Vic? And then that whole thing with the animators? I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, Barbara's a complete bitch. She banned me five years ago. And, like, who... I mean, who's surprised that the volume six sucks? I mean, come on. They're just ruining Monty's vision. Okay. First and foremost. Whether you side with or against Vic doesn't matter with the writing. The whole situation was great in the animators, well was terrible, doesn't affect the writing. Your personal feelings towards Barbara, or Bernie, or Gus, or Michael, or Lindsay, or Miles, or Carrie, doesn't affect the writing. And the last thing in there, the whole thing with them ruining Monty's vision, irks me. <laughs> a little bit of a tangent here, I'm sorry, but it really, it, it, it irks me. Because here's the thing, I was there active in Rooster Teeth since Red vs. Blue Season 2. So I was there when they started talking about Ruby. When they started releasing the trailers for Ruby. I was in the forums. I was reading interviews and the blog posts. I was sitting... God, I remember the goddamn Rooster Teeth comic. Who remembers the Rooster Teeth comic? Because I do. I was there. Monty always knew he was not a writer. He is an amazing animator. He is a great dancer. He is a great artist. He was a great guy, but he was not a great writer. And he knew it. So he had the concept for Ruby. He had all these awesome fight scenes in his mind, this rule of cool things. And that that's Ruby. Rule of cool. She uses a goddamn sniper rifle scythe. Rule of cool. But he knew he could not write a good story for it. So what did he do? He went to Miles and Carrie. And the three of them worked out the story arc. So I know there was that blog post talking about how Miles and Carrie are disrespecting Monty and ruining his, his product. But it's not. Okay, I can't say it's not true. I don't know Miles. I don't know Carrie. I don't know Monty. I don't know. I don't even remember who wrote the goddamn blog post. But I looked at all the evidence in front of me. I looked at everything I see from Rooster Teeth. Everything they say. Everything coming out of them. I look at that one blog post. And I choose to believe... They are not disrespecting Monty. 
Monty knew he couldn't write a good story. That's why he got Miles and Carrie to help him write a good story. So he could put his awesome animation and fight scenes to that story. So to sit there and simply dismiss it as the ruining Monty's vision pisses me off. I didn't know Monty. Chances are whoever watching this, you didn't know Monty. So I feel like we're insulting him to simply sit there and say, well, Miles and Carey are ruining Monty's godly vision. No. Monty wasn't a god. Monty was human. He was an amazing person. We are worse off for his loss. But it's not fair to accuse them of, of ruining his, his dream. That's a tangent there. I'm sorry. That's just, that bugs me. So, Miles and Carey have been doing this for a while. They don't need me to defend them. I know they don't. But I'm not necessarily doing this for them. I'm sure they have the thick skin. I'm sure they know how to deal with it. I'm doing this for everyone. Everyone who is a writer. Because I've had that moment. If you want to criticize someone's work, good, awesome. The more you like it, the more you should criticize. Because be constructive. The people out there who simply dismiss something as terrible, who tell you it's garbage, who tell you your writing is just bad and won't give you reasons, that crushes a writer. Now I know my early work in writing was bad. I have four full-length novels that will never be published because they suck. But they gave me the experience I needed. Them and countless hours of fan fiction and short stories and poetry gave me the skills I needed. My current novel is something I feel really good about. But even in that, I'm flagging things. But I've also felt someone tell me how terrible my writing is. I felt that crush my creative spirit. I know how hard it is to get going again after someone sits there and tells you that what you do is garbage. And so it pisses me off. When people do that. Please. If you do not think. Ruby Volume 6 is written well. And you have genuine criticism about it. Post them down below. We'll talk. Maybe you saw something I missed. Maybe I saw something you missed. I don't care. That's great. That's good. If you can really do it. Share that constructive criticism with the creators. But if you're one of those people. That just sits there and just goes. Oh my god it's terrible. It's garbage. Ugh. Stop it. Because I'm sure you're not just doing that to Ruby, you're doing it to everything. Ruby Volume 6 is not badly written. And I can prove it. So, people, for the most part, all generally liked Chapter 3 with Salem and Osmond backstory. They liked Brunswick Farms, and they liked the apathy. It's not till the end that people seem to have problems. And their problems all seem to be plot-based. Which, again, you don't like the plot. That's fine. Don't like the plot. You don't have... You don't have to. You're under no obligation to like the plot. But that doesn't mean it's bad writing. So I'm going to address what I've seen the most commonly given examples of bad writing. So Ruby and Sean's plan. What happens to Adam. Cordovan and the mech. The giant Grimm. The silver eyes. Cordovan's 180. Those seem to be what people point to as bad writing. So let's start. Ruby and Sean's plan is stupid. Okay? It is. It's supposed to be. They're teenagers. Now, my son will probably get annoyed at me for this saying this later. But still, teenagers are overconfident. They're in that weird sort of space where they're not really quite adults yet, but they're no longer little kids. And they always seem to think they are better than they are. Ruby and John's plan was not fully thought out. They should have sent someone with Blake. Because any adult would tell you, you don't send one person in to do a critical part of the mission. Don't send Yang. She, like they said in the show, is too goddamn loud. If only you had someone who was basically a ninja, like, I don't know, Ren. Send them in, just in case. Just in case there's a super strong Atlas specialist who is there, who gives Blake a problem, Ren can disable it. So then when they get there and Blake encounters Adam, Ren can disable it. And the plan goes off without a hitch. But they didn't think of that. So yeah, the plan was kind of stupid. But it made sense for who came up with the plan. It is exactly the sort of reckless, stupid plan two teenagers who are good at fighting and therefore full of themselves would come up with. So it tracks with the characterization of Ruby and Jean. It's a dumb plan. That's the point. And Adam. Okay, Adam. Listen. People out there, you either had two reactions to Adam. 
either, yeah, he's dead, or, oh my god, you guys ruined the character. How? People want more on Adam. So either you had the catharsis of Adam dying, which means good writing, or you like want more of Adam. If he was a badly written character, he would have died and people would have been like, yeah. But they weren't. They were upset or they felt amazing. Those are great examples of good writing. Now Cordovan. Yeah, it was stupid of Cordovan to go in the mech to fight them. But Cordovan is this woman who's so caught up in her honor and her position and her ego that she couldn't bear the idea of being defied by these kids. It was her job to protect Atlas and to protect uh, Argus, both of them, and she was going to do it. And these children would not dare defy her, so she is going to go slap them down herself. It's not good enough to send fighters to go do it. She needs to do it. So her getting in a giant mech and going to fight them makes sense. Now. Is it possibly more than likely uh, them trying to show off, hey, look how great our mechs are for Genlock? Probably. But that doesn't mean it doesn't track for the character. That doesn't mean it's bad writing. You can kill two birds with one stone. It does happen. So, yeah, that tracks for her character. And the Leviathan showing up and attacking Argus also makes sense. Everyone watched this giant fucking robot come out the base and shooting in an airship. And they go off, you know, the distance behind the trees where nobody can see them. But at one point, the f robot falls over and the entire city shakes. I don't know about you, but I would be terrified. I think most people would be scared. An entire city, uh, city as big as artists scared? Not artists, Argus. Scared? Yeah, that could attract some grim. I could totally see Leviathan showing up out of that. Now, if you just didn't like the design of Leviathan, okay, fine. But that is not a writing problem. That's just a design problem. It's showing up made sense. Now, as for the whole thing with the silver eyes, again, people didn't like it. They didn't like the fact that she used Jin to freeze time. They didn't like the fact that you saw her mom. Ah. Okay, look, I get that it's not perfect, but the biggest, closest thing you have to sort of a hole in that argument is Jin. And honestly, from the, every time I've watched it, I've never gotten the sense that a lot of people get. I don't think Jin showed her her mother. I think Jin's whole, let me give you one piece of advice thing, was her saying, Neh, you're not doing this again. You don't get to use me like this. It wasn't any actual real knowledge. It was the knowledge that if she ever used Jin like this again, Jin would make her ask her a question. But she didn't do it that time. She just gave Ruby what Ruby needed. A second to breathe. To think about what mattered. And she thought about it. She thought about people she wanted to protect. She thought about her silver eyes. Which made her think about her mother. That's the way I took it. But that's just me. That is about the closest thing you have to bad writing. But it's not even really bad writing in that moment. And the final part. Cordovan's 180 also tracks. So Cordovan went out to kick their asses and lost. Now she's sitting here listening to her soldiers screaming in panic and fighting this Grimm that she caused to show up by making the entire city panic. And she's feeling like a failure. And she looks at these kids, these kids who have this perfect opportunity to get away, turn around and go fight the Leviathan. So while she's sitting here trying to get to the armed release and free herself so she can go help, these kids don't take their chance. They go to help the people. And Cordovan is big on that. That's her duty. That's what she uses to make herself feel superior. But these kids proved that she was wrong about them. Because if they were truly the, the horrible people she said they were, they would have just left. But they didn't. So Cordovan had a change of heart. Would she probably have another one later on? Yeah, when she's not quite so stressed out, more than likely. But she didn't. Now I'm not sitting here and saying that Ruby Volume 6 is perfectly written. There is no such thing as a perfectly written story. There isn't. It just doesn't exist. I wish it existed. I would write the perfect story. I mean, to be the author who wrote the perfect story, how amazing would that be? There are flaws. We should discuss them. Cordovan's uh, turnaround was a bit fast. The idea of Ruby seeing her mom was a bit ambiguous. But overall, it is still the same quality of writing we had through the entire volume. If you want bad writing, Bad writing for the rule of cool? The proof that this does exist because there is bad writing? Game of Thrones Season 8. Okay? 
the whole thing with Daenerys and the dragon and blowing up the city. All the arguments, I'm not going to go into them right now because this is supposed to be about Ruby, but all the arguments that people have had for watching that, or even the people who haven't watched, go look at the arguments up. Right there, you have characters pulling 180s in the characterization. Plans that don't make sense. You got Varys, who is the master of whispers, who has 15 plans how to go take his morning shit, get caught and executed. You got Tyrion, the witty, you know, con man who lives just by how clever he is. Sit there go, I'm so stupid, I don't know what to do. And you got Daenerys, like, I'm gonna murder them all just so we can have the dragon blowing up the city. Cool scene. It was a cool scene. That looked really awesome. But it made no sense. The story didn't make sense. The characters turned around the plot. Nothing made sense. Ruby, the characterizations all match. The plot matched. Just because you didn't like where it went doesn't mean it's bad writing. If you don't like Ruby Volume 6, that's okay. I am not sitting here telling you to like it. I am sitting here begging you. Be honest about why you don't like it. If you don't like the plot, then say that. If you, if you don't like the writing, that have real reasons. Just stop. This has to stop. Not just for Ruby, but for all the creators out there. When you tell us that we're garbage, when you tell us our writing is garbage, our poetry, our videos, whatever they may be, are garbage, or terrible, or worthless. When you tell us we are ruining people who we care about, vision, or dreams, you destroy what we are making, our creative process. And so the people out there who may actually enjoy it may be deprived of it because you couldn't be honest about what you're feeling. If you don't like the story, don't like the story. But don't say the story has bad writing to justify it. You just don't like it. And that's okay. So, sorry about that. It really bothers me. And I'm probably not the person to be posting this. I'm not a big name. I'm not well known. Nobody really cares what I think. But I care. And I needed to say it. So please, if you liked, if you like our channel, if you like our content, by all means, please go ahead, subscribe, hit the bell, Comment below, like the video, dislike the video. Do whatever suits you, but just please. 